Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Claudia. Welcome to my studio apartment in Brooklyn, New York. Come on in. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Before today's episode, click the join button below to support all of the storytelling we do on this channel. Our growing community of members help to directly fund more videos so we can capture these extraordinary homes from around the world. So join today to receive early and exclusive access to new Homeworthy videos. Hi, my name is Claudia Williams. I'm a freelance writer and content creator living in Brooklyn, New York. And today we are in my roughly 400 square foot studio apartment. So I've been living in Brooklyn for four years and I had had roommates the entire time. And in September, my lease was up and I was ready to live alone. I wanted to get a cat. Um, but if you've ever lived in New York or roughly anywhere in the world, you know that September is kind of the trickiest time of year to move. The it's like a cutthroat experience. So I decided that instead of immediately moving into a new apartment, I was going to put my stuff into storage and travel a bit. Um, I'm a freelancer, so I really had no reason not to. Um, so I put everything in storage and I went to England for two months and I lived in London with a stranger. We wound up becoming really great friends. And then at the end of the trip, I did a road trip to the Cotswolds and Dorset and went to antique malls and flea markets and took baths twice a day and read by the fireplace and it was so idyllic. But in the back of my mind the entire time I knew I was going to be going back to New York and needed an apartment. So at the beginning of the trip, I had hired a broker. Her name is Naomi, Naomi Steinberg and she went to apartment viewings for me and we would FaceTime and I swear I talked to her more than I talked to my mother on that trip because it was every day I was on street easy looking for apartments constantly. And being a freelancer with a single income, landlords just do not, did not like me. Um, <laughs> so I got declined from I think 15 or 20 apartments while I was in England. And so I was just like so stressed and I thought, okay, I'll go back to New York and hopefully when I'm there, it becomes easier. Um, and so I got back and I stayed with friends and I would go to apartment viewings every day and everything was just not it. It was either overpriced or like icky and I was like, I'm not gonna put my heart and soul into an apartment I don't love. So I kind of decided, okay, maybe I'll move home for a while. It was just a really treacherous time in my life. And then one night at like midnight, I was on Street Easy and I thought, what if I just raised my budget by $100 and just like, what if something was just a little bit over budget? And so I did that and this apartment showed up and the photos of it were really bad. Um, a man had been living here, which he had bikes hanging from the ceiling. The walls were dark gray. He had tools everywhere and it was just a really awful layout. But I noticed this mirror, uh, it's a Pierre mirror. It's original to the house. And I immediately like gasped because all I wanted was an apartment with architecture and natural light. And so I emailed the broker and she was like, can you come in the morning? And I came the next morning, met her, we became besties. And the guy who was living here was like, this is the best apartment I've ever lived in. The landlord's super kind. Utilities are included. It's rent stabilized. There's laundry in the basement. And I was just like, had tears in my eyes because I was so excited. Um, and so I got the keys two weeks later and still to this day cannot believe I live here because it's like the dream apartment and I don't know how I got so lucky, but it, um, I, I firmly believe that all of the stress and apartment denials and just the waiting was worth it because I found this apartment um, and so I like to think it was waiting for me. So here we are in like the living space of my apartment. These are the bookshelves, my pride and joy. Um, they only co cost about $120 to make. So if you're considering installing bookshelves into your apartment, let me tell you, it is a lot easier and cheaper than you'd think. 
I am a big fan of historical fiction, so a lot of the books I have are either some form of romance, fiction about like the war, I love a spy novel, things like that. Um, some of my favorite books in my collection are ones I bought in the Cotswolds. So this is an entire book about old English country houses, and it's just like the most beautiful book. Um, I think I bought probably 15 books while I was in England, so my suitcase was overweight and I had to pay $100 to bring it home, um, which was probably not my, my best move, but alas, what are you going to do? And then I am a huge fan of these terracotta pictures. This one I bought recently on a trip upstate. It's French and I have about six or so of them. I love that they don't all match, but they all kind of tell a story. So you can see I have one up there that I got in Florida of all places. And then both of those I bought in New York. Um, one of them I found on a street. Someone was selling it on their curb, which is hilarious, only in New York. And then, yeah, I have a lot of cute little books that I've just collected through the years. Sometimes I buy a book, even if it's in a foreign language, because I think it's cute. This one is entirely in German. I have no idea what it says, but I love the way it looks. Um, <laughs> so, you know, some things are more for looks than for practicality, and that's okay, too. Um, and a lot of the art that I have in the apartment, I have found throughout my travels. I found this one at a flea market in Spain, and it actually went missing for three years while I was in New York. I couldn't find it. And then I found it literally like tucked away in the back of a closet in my last apartment on move out day. And that was exhilarating. Um, this is kind of a fun piece. This I found on the street and it is filled with my matchbook collection. Um, I have a ton of matches from restaurants throughout New York. Um, I kind of just steal them wherever I go. This one's from Boston. Um, and this is filled to the brim with matches. Some of them are also my dad's. He collected matches as well. Um, one of my favorite things is I found a matchbook of his with a woman's phone number on it, which is a little bit scandalous. So if I had to pick one area of the apartment that I feel like really embodies like who I am and like my design style, it would definitely be my bookshelf. Everything I have on there is something that I love with all my heart. If this apartment set on fire, I would try and take everything on the bookshelf with me. And so I think about the bookshelves look kind of cluttered, but they're very curated and everything has a place. And I just keep adding to it when I find treasures that speak to me. And I've always dreamed of a bookcase with everything I love on it. So every time I sit on the couch and watch a movie or read, just looking at that bookcase that goes up 12 feet brings me immense joy. Um, and then when I finish a book, I get to get on a ladder because they're 12 foot tall, climb up to the top and put the book on the top shelf because I have a system where books on the top shelves I've read, books on the bottom shelves I haven't read, so it's easily grabbable. And yeah, the other highlight of the this corner of the apartment is the original shutters. Um, they open and close, so it's kind of my morning ritual with Stanley. I'll wake up in the morning and immediately open the shutters because he loves to see outside and chirp with the birds. Um, they have like this amazing opening and closing and the original locks on them. Um, and so it's great for privacy, great for blocking out the sun if I'm having a cozy movie day. Um, and yeah, they're just stunning. And it makes for a great little place for a cat to hang out. He's very happy here. <laughs> so this chair has been in my family for 125 years. Um, but this pillow is actually an Indian block printed pillow that I got from um, Lulu in Georgia, but it has kind of an antique feel to it. So this is one of the newer things in my apartment but it's actually, um, I feel like it looks collected and like I've gotten it on like some of my travels, which I, I really look for in a piece. So when I moved into this apartment in November, it had these very blah chandeliers that I just felt like didn't do the apartment justice. And I waited six months to find the right chandeliers and they're from a brand out of England called Pookie. And they are absolutely stunning. And what really like drew my eye to them were the shades on all of the light bulbs. They're made with Morris & Co. linen fabric and have this silk 
yellow interior that when you turn them on, it just warms up the room. Uh, I'm not usually an overhead lighting person. I am a big fan of lamps, but these chandeliers have kind of changed that for me. When you turn them on, they're like so warm and make the room feel just really grand. And I feel it kind of highlights all of the details. The mirror, the way the light reflects off the mirror is super special. Um, and the brand also sent me a really great lamp for my desk, which is also made of Morrison Co. linen fabric. Um, and I just love the kind of English cottagey, but also refined feel that they have to them. Um, and I will be taking these with me when I move out. I kept the original chandeliers. They're hiding in the closet. And so I'm sorry to my landlord, but these will be coming with me. <laughs> so here we have the pièce de résistance. This is the original Pierre mirror. It goes all the way up to the ceiling, which makes for a really fun windexing and dusting experience. Um, I have to crawl on the ladder. And I, to this day, just cannot believe I have this in my apartment. I feel like, A, it makes the space feel so much longer and kind of, um, you know, brings your eye up and is just a stunning thing to look at. But it's also extremely practical because I didn't have to buy a floor length mirror when I moved in. Um, and so, yeah, this would have been the original parlor room where the family who lived in the brownstone would have like received guests and had a grand old time. And now I get to watch You've Got Mail while hanging out on my couch and looking at it. I have a house scent? I didn't think so, at least. And then the other day I was talking to a friend of mine and I was saying, I really wish my apartment had a signature scent. And she looked at me and she was like, it does. And I'm not sure what that is. It must just be a culmination of the various candles I'm burning. This candle is from a really old pharmacy in the West Village called C.O. Bigelow. They use their original like packaging for their candles, which I think is just so amazing. So it kind of goes into the antique inspired feel that I love in this apartment. And then this candlestick is actually my grandma's. I remember it being in her guest bedroom when I was little, we'd have sleepovers. Um, and one of my favorite things about it is you can raise or lower the candle. I'm probably not gonna do it right now because the candle's lit. It's really special. I don't even know how old this thing is. And it also came with a wick cutter. So once the candle's done burning, you can chop the wick off. And this is one of my favorite little vignettes in the whole apartment. So now we are kind of migrating into the living area and where I spend a majority of my time with this guy. Um, his name is Stanley. Hello. But I call him Boozles because I don't think anybody calls their cat by their real name. This sofa is the comfiest thing I've ever sat on. It's an Ikea sofa that I got on Facebook Marketplace. I never thought I'd have a white couch because I'm quite prone to spills, but so far we're doing well. I just have a bleach pen on hand at all times. Um, and then I put this cute little quilt down for Stanley to sleep on. This quilt I actually found on the streets of New York on a railing outside of an apartment and I went home and washed it, obviously. I think one of my favorite things in the living area would have to be these curtains, which I made. Um, you might be able to tell because they're a little bit wonky, but my best friend growing up, Marina, her grandma was a huge sewer and like a really talented seamstress and she passed away recently and Marina went into her sewing room and took piles of fabric and picked out ones that she thought I would like and I brought them back and made a curtain out of it. So this is kind of an homage to my friend Marina's grandma Peggy, which is really sweet. And yeah, they're a little bit wonky, but you know, I like that they add character. And he likes to peek out the windows. Hello. Uh, so because the space is kind of tight, I don't have like a proper end table. Um, and this stool belonged to my dad. I think it's um, Chinese and it's hundreds of years old and it has this beautiful mother of pearl inlay on it. And it can double as like a place to put my coffee. I can put my feet up. I also use it when I have friends over for dinner as a dining little stool. Um, it's usually where I sit because it's not the most comfortable. But it is, it, I just love the floral pattern on it and how it adds kind of a whimsical, warm uh, feel to the room. I can honestly say there are no challenges that have come with living in a studio apartment. I feel like I've laid the space out so perfectly and I also live alone. It's just me and my, my cat, Stanley. Um, and the 12 foot ceilings of the apartment 
really make it feel big and the windows let in so much light. Um, there's also a front porch where I have a dining table so my friends and I can eat outside and the desk behind me also doubles as a dining table. Um, so I've truly never run into any issues living in a studio. I think from an outsider's perspective, like my family who live in, you know, five bedroom homes in Illinois, look at a studio and think, how could you ever live in there? But in New York, you just kind of like, you fine tune your belongings and your lifestyle to fit the space. Um, I don't have anything in excess. Everything I have is for a reason. I've purged a lot throughout the years. Um, and so I kind of love living in a studio. I love that I get to see everything all like all the time. If I lived in a big house, I wouldn't get to see everything I love. Um, and yeah, it's very cozy in here. It's very intimate. And I plan to live here for eternity. Probably not, but I would if I could. <laughs> So now we are kind of segueing into my bedroom or my like area of slumber. Um, because this is a studio, there's not like a real defining line between bedroom and living room. So I found this stunning antique room divider on a road trip to Cape Cod. I think it has to be hundreds of years old, maybe it's not, but I found it in a dressing room. And I asked the woman at the front desk, I was like, is that for sale? And she said, no. And I said, would you reconsider? And so she said, if I can find another room divider in the basement that I can use in its place, you can buy it. So I bought this even before I knew that I was moving out of my apartment, just because I knew one day I was going to live alone in a studio, most likely, and I would need it. So she finally has her moment to shine and she defies or defines the living room and the bedroom and I also use her to hang clothes on um, and so she kind of gets cluttered throughout the week but you know she's doing her job and I love her. So we're segueing into the slumber area. One of my favorite pieces is this dresser that I got on Facebook Marketplace a few years ago. The owners of it actually hand delivered it to me and carried it up the stairs and they were like emotional getting rid of it because they loved it so much but they just didn't have space for it anymore. Um, it's made out of English pine and it has these original knobs that I love and the joinery, the woodwork is amazing like people just do not make stuff like this anymore you know and so she doubles as a nightstand and I have this little basket hanging with like my little hand creams and my chapsticks um, just you know things you need before bed and then hanging above the dresser is the painting that I had mentioned earlier that I saw um, at an antique store in upstate New York. It's hand painted on wood and it was a little bit out of my budget but so I didn't buy it immediately and then for weeks afterwards I just kept saying to myself like why didn't you buy the painting and so I wound up emailing and uh, the owner of the painting mailed it to me and um, she her name is Clarice I named her and I don't know her story, but I feel like I should make one up for her because she's so elegant and I love her hat and her um, necklace is great as well. And yeah, these um, sconces are just for, for looks. They don't work. Um, and I got these cute little sconce shades on a trip to Philly. But one day maybe I'll hardwire them so they actually turn on. But for now, I just like the way they look. And I like the way they kind of anchor my headboard as well, which is this beautiful upholstered headboard from Lulu in Georgia and a really nice ochre and white stripe that matches everything else in my apartment that's yellow, um, including this gingham lampshade that I love. So I feel like there was the, a phase where everybody had white bedding and then everybody decided white bedding was kind of dull and I am on that train. Um, I really wanted like pattern fun kind of cottagey bedding and this is from Piglet and Bed which is an English brand and I loved the gingham um, and I kind of like the way that it highlights the pink bed skirt which brings in the pink from the chair um, and then I have some pinstriped cotton sheets from uh, a brand called Koyuchi that are like hotel level soft. One day maybe I'll have white bedding again, I doubt it. I love just kind of playing with different textures and fabrics and having fun especially living in a studio when your bed is out for the world to see you have to make it pretty and you have to make it 
fun and match the vibe. And um, yeah, I really love this bedding. I dreamed of having a rug this color and I just could not find it anywhere. Um, and then I was working with Lulu and Georgia on the headboard and I thought, do you have a, I was like, do you have a rug that is this perfect shade of green? And it's actually vintage, handmade, and it's a stunning green color that I think pulls out perfectly from the other greens in my apartment. Everything feels really like, nothing came together, but somehow feels like it was made for each other. Um, the rug is my favorite thing in the apartment, and it's also Stanley's. He loves to get his nails in there, uh, which is really bad for the rug, but you know, what are you gonna do? He's a cat, so. <laughs> From the bedroom, you look directly at these stunning double doors, which sold me on the apartment. Uh, when I walked in the front door of the building and she was like, that's the door to the apartment. I was like, you're kidding me. They are just amazing. She re the landlord restained them recently to match the other wood in the apartment. And just to like lay in bed at night and look at these doors is like a treat. I feel like I'm constantly like on a little English you know, B&B &B escape in my own home, which I feel very blessed for. But yeah, they're grand. They make for a grand entrance. Everyone who comes over is like, also like, those are your front doors. And I'm like, yeah, those are my front doors. Um, so now we have my desk, which is a recent acquisition. I looked on Facebook Marketplace for two months, trying to find a pine old desk that would fit this like perfect little nook. And I went, I even went on a road trip to upstate New York looking for an antique desk and didn't find one. And then this man in Ch Chelsea was selling this desk. The photos of it were bad. He had no measurements. He had no details, but I saw the potential. And so I went and picked it up and it somehow like fit absolutely perfectly. Um, and it does double duty as a dining table as well if I pull it out from the wall. Um, and this chair is a Salvation Army find. It was $10. It's not the most comfortable chair but she's doing the job for now maybe one day i'll get like an actual comfortable desk chair but you know sometimes aesthetics are more important than comfort and this is a fun little curation of some of my favorite pieces of art when i moved to new york i had a few pieces of art but nothing that i really loved and this piece was the first painting i ever bought for myself as opposed to you know, stealing from my grandpa, who's an art collector. Um, I found it at a store in Carroll Gardens. Um, this is a etching of a famous church in Vienna. I studied abroad in Vienna in college, and I never bought a souvenir while I was over there, and I always regretted it. And I found this at Chelsea Flea Market for like 20 bucks, and I was like, that's the souvenir I never bought for myself. Um, and then this is from my dad. Um, it's missing the glass but I kind of like the way it looks. Um, and this is another one of those terracotta pictures that I collect. This is also a Chelsea Market find. Um, Chelsea Flea Market is open on the weekends if you haven't been. That is where a lot of my good antiques come from. Not to give away all my secrets, but Chelsea Flea Market in Manhattan is great. Um, and yeah, this gorgeous lamp is from the same brand who made my chandeliers and she just adds a lot of coziness and she also is made of that terracotta orange that I really like. Uh, so like I was saying, everything in my apartment has a story behind it. This sconce I got on my road trip in England and my bag was so overweight with books that I had to take some stuff out and mail it home. And if you've never mailed anything home from England, the customs form, um, they take it so seriously and I did not know that. So I shipped this home, some heavy sweaters and like some tea, but somehow the box made it to me two months later. So this was a sort of, you know, um, a long awaited piece to hang on my wall. And then these candlesticks I also got in England and they're like perfectly tiny. And it just makes my heart happy just to have a little heart sconce. So yeah, that was a bit of a process to get that candlestick here. <laughs> so I needed some extra storage in this apartment and I wanted a piece that had some character to it. And I found this on Facebook Marketplace uh, and it was two blocks away so I just carried it home. It's really heavy. But it was this sort of um, boring, creamy white color 
and I had just visited the Betsy Ross house in Philadelphia, <laughs> uh, the woman who made the first American flag, and the molding of her house had this minty, perfect green, and I took photos of it and brought it to the hardware store and had them match it. So this is Betsy Ross green, um, and I painted it and probably didn't even let it dry properly before I started decorating it because I was so excited. And on it is my collection of miniature um, milk creamers. So I have the big ones on the bookshelf, but then I also like to collect these really tiny ones. I make a lot of coffee at home and film like coffee content. And so I bought these as kind of like a way to pour your milk and just make it look really cute. And then I got hooked on collecting them. And so now when my friends go on trips, they buy me them. So my friend just went to Mexico and bought me this one. Um, I love this guy. They're just kind of silly and make my heart happy. Um, and then this is another find I got on a trip to the Netherlands. It's a French brand or French maker. Um, and it has this cute little guy on it with cute little pants. So, and these are my um, cookbooks. I have some vintage cookbooks. Um, and this is a cookbook that belonged to my dad. It was it's like a tiki drink, a famous tiki drink place and it's a bartender's guide to making cocktails. I would consider my apartment like traditional eclectic. It's kind of curated and cluttered and collected, but also very refined and everything is really intentional. Um, and mostly everything in the apartment is antique or secondhand. I can probably count on my 10 fingers how many things in the apartment are new. Um, a lot of things are gifted from grandparents or my parents. I found a lot of things at flea markets or antique stores. I found some stuff on the street, Facebook marketplace. Um, if I could spend every day of my life thrifting or going to flea markets, I would. I never get sick of it. Um, and so that's kind of what I, I just look for pieces that speak to me or have a story. Um, ideally, everything I buy, I will have forever. Um, and yeah, I think traditional eclectic. I also like to call this apartment my urban cottage. Um, I feel sometimes when I'm at home, I put on like the fireplace on my TV and have a cup of tea and pretend I'm in England again, and it's not that far off. From here, we head into the bathroom. It's kind of just your typical New York bathroom, but I wanted to add some character to it. Um, if you'll notice, I clearly like floral yellow fabric. Um, so from the time I got the apartment to moving in, I had a week and I didn't want to buy any furniture because I didn't know what I would need. So I started hyper fixating on getting a shower curtain and I couldn't find one anywhere that I liked online. So my friend Shay decided she was going to make one for me. And we went to a few fabric stores in the city and I just didn't find any fabric I liked. And then we thought, what if we get a tablecloth? And so I went to this store in Cobble Hill called 21 Terra and I bought this Indian block printed tablecloth. And then my friend Shay sewed it into a shower curtain. And shower curtains are like the focal point of a bathroom. They take up so much visual space. So I was like, I want to love the shower curtain. And I think it, I, it, I think it's so special. I love the tulips on it. Tulips are my favorite flower. And now I get to match my shower curtain. Um, and yeah, it's pretty compact, but I feel like I've made it work. I installed these pegs um, that kind of, you know, I hang my towels, my glasses, little baskets, um, and then some found art that I got in the city at Housing Works, which is a great thrift store. Um, and yeah, it's, the ceilings are tall in here as well, which makes it feel bigger. I really love this bathroom, despite it being quite compact. It's really cozy. Everything in this apartment, I, like I was saying, is found or thrifted, and this was a Facebook Marketplace find. Um, it was 60 bucks, and I had the girl Uber package it to me, so it just showed up on my doorstep, and it is the perfect storage um, little guy, and it's, has, it's come with me to two different apartments now, and I, I feel like I'll have her forever, and she'll just kind of wear many hats and serve different purposes throughout her life. Um, this is my little bowl of bars of soap because I love bars of soap um, and you know just little these are my grandma's the same grandma who had the candlestick um, 
and she she downsized recently and held on to a bunch of stuff for me that she thought I would like and so now I get to put them in my apartment which is really special um, and the lamp I'm not a big overhead lighting person so I don't ever turn the light on in the bathroom I just turn this little lamp on um, and if you've ever driven by a house at Christmas time and noticed all of those candles in the windows this is what that is. Um, I got it for a dollar at a thrift store and it's supposed to be like, you know, in the window and then I just put a little lampshade on it and it makes for a really cozy showering experience as opposed to like the bright overhead light, which I do not like. Um, just never turn that on. <laughs> so I am a freelance writer and content creator. So currently I'm working on some stories for Architectural Digest focused around historic homes, which is my dream. Um, I recently did a story on Biltmore and I'm working on a piece on um, Mount Vernon which is George Washington's estate and then as a content creator I love to make videos in my home. I love highlighting kind of like slow living, waking up with like having a cup of coffee and a book um, and I've now that I've moved in this apartment I've really pivoted towards interiors as well so I make a lot of content around decorating before and after videos, um, DIYs and stuff like that. So I kind of just wear a lot of hats. I, as a content creator and writer, I feel like I really get to exercise my creativity and kind of just like go where the wind takes me, which I'm very blessed to be able to do. Um, and creating content in this beautiful home and writing about historic homes is just like my dream job. So I'm very lucky. So now we are moving into my kitchen. It's pretty small by most people's standards, but for me it does the job and it's perfect. Um, I covered the counters in this peel and stick paper, which took a lot of trial and error, but once I got it um, down, I feel like it makes a world of a difference. I had considered painting the cabinets, but it's so much work to paint cabinets. And I kind of like the wood. I think like the kitchen is really cozy and warm. And I was like, why am I going to paint the cabinets? So I just didn't. And I kind of liked the way it looked. Um, one thing that I've done that I really love is I hung art on the backsplash. I think that's becoming more and more common these days. But this piece of art I had nowhere to put in the living room. And I was like, what if I just hung it in the kitchen? So I got like a command hook and I hung that there. And I like the way it looks and kind of makes the corner feel special. Like I think a kitchen can be, it doesn't have to feel like a kitchen. It can be another warm, cozy place to hang out. And I feel like this kitchen is very much that. Um, all of these little things I found, um, you know, thrift stores. I love all these wooden spoons. Uh, and again, this is another one of those little miniature lamps. I cook in the dark because I don't like overhead lighting, but uh, you know, it's the price you pay. So the newest addition to this kitchen is this light. I had fallen in love with a light similar to this on Pinterest, but it was multi hundreds of dollars and I just was not prepared to spend that. And the friend who made the shower curtain, my friend Shay, once again, she's very talent she, talented. She was like, I will make you that light. And so I got another block printed tablecloth and we went to town and made it in the span of probably a week. She made most of it. I kind of just like encouraged and helped um, where I could. And then she installed it and I just am obsessed with it. I, no one, no one has one. It's completely, you know, it's an original Shea creation. Um, and I like the way that it pulls in green from the rest of the apartment and adds a little sort of whimsical touch yeah, I still don't turn her on that often because I like the intimacy of the lamps, but I feel like she's more like a piece of art than a light, and I just adore her. Um, and then because the counter space is sort of limited in the kitchen, I built this kind of rolling skirted table moment, um, and I got this fabric from a flea market in London. It's French cotton and I just put a piece of wood on this like tiny little table, skirted it, stained the wood and then hung this directly above it. This was a find from a junk store in Williamsburg and I feel like it almost looks kind of built in and looks very like shaker inspired. The hooks are really functional. I can grab whatever I need. 
all of my linen napkins that I found. I love collecting linens. These are all, um, I bring them out for my dinner parties. I'm kind of anti-paper towel, anti-paper napkin. <laughs> um, and yeah, I have, you know, my granola, my coffee, my tea. This is kind of where I make my morning coffee. I love to cook. I'm not very inventive. I grew up with an Italian grandma, so I'm used to eating a lot of pasta, garlic, lemon. Um, my friends joke that every time they come over, I make them some variation of the same lemon chicken soup. And so I'm trying to kind of branch out a little bit, but I just make what you know feels right. I think my signature dish, besides the lemon chicken soup that everybody jokes about, is um, bolognese. I went to Bologna, Italy a few years ago and spent like a year trying to make the bolognese taste the same way that they made it. And I feel like I perfected it. And so that's what I make when guests are coming over and I know I want, like I don't want to fail and try some weird new dish. So I just make bolognese and it never, it never fails and it always tastes good. Um, I also love to bake. I opened a bakery in my mom's kitchen during the pandemic called Claudette's and I was making croissants. I was making banana bread, um, cookies. And so one day I hope to open a real bakery um, in upstate New York. That's kind of my retirement plan. Um, but for now, I'm just baking for friends and making pasta and enjoying the small kitchen and making the most of it. I think home for me is not always a specific place. It's kind of more like a feeling of just like safety and comfort and warmth. Um, I made this apartment my home. I think I could have done that anywhere. I'm glad it's this apartment because it's stunning. But one thing my mom reminded me of when I couldn't find an apartment, she was like, wherever you move, you will make it cute. You will make it your home. Um, and so, yeah, I think home is what you make of it and what you fill a home with, like love, things you love, a cozy cat. Um, and yeah, I think home is just your belongings, things you love and cozy comfort. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Be sure to go to homeworthy.com for exclusive content, shopping guides, and so much more.